This is a shrink-wrapped copy of Math Patrol, the hit math game released on Game Boy Advance in 2007. And this is the glow-in-the-dark analog pocket, which was recently released in highly limited quantities. It's a retro gaming handheld, and I'm sure you may be wondering why would I purchase a glow-in-the-dark analog pocket? Was it all just to play the Game Boy game, High Stakes Gambling? Actually, it wasn't, although this game is pretty cool. Look at the opening cutscene on this game. Dateline, October 1st, 1927. The mob is in control of the city. Machine Gun Max. Notorious Mafia boss has just arrived and is... Looking for action. You are... <laughs> So no, I did not buy the glow-in-the-dark analog pocket to play high-stakes gambling on the original Game Boy. In fact, I purchased the device to play this game, what will surely be one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life. Math Patrol, the kleptoid threat. In box, shrink-wrapped, isn't this just so neat? So let's take a close look at the box, and then we will unbox this highly valuable Game Boy Advance game. Again, this came out in 2007. It is from the GXB Learning Series, aimed at training the user in uh, first and second grade math, according to United States of America standards. Apparently, there was a planned sequel that never came out, so that's too bad. It'd be very interesting to take a look at that, but there's only this game that we can cling on to for hope. You can tell around the time this game came out, the DS was a big thing, uh, but the DS had a Game Boy Advance slot, so some games released on Game Boy Advance had that plays on DS logo in the corner. So if you're looking to get a math fix on your Nintendo DS, Math Patrol had you covered. This game is rated E for everyone, so it's not too spicy. Uh, it's, well, I don't know if these are the developers, I don't think so. These are the publishers, I think, Tomy. I don't remember what sorts of games they published back in the day. Licensed games for kids, I don't know, something like that. Uh, the spine, we get another good look at that very bold font choice for the logo of the game. The camera doesn't seem to want to focus on it. Maybe if I move my hand out of the way. No, you can see what it looks like. It's, it's, ah, oh, there we go. Look at that, Math Patrol. <laughs> we are about to go on Math Patrol. I am so excited. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit on these pictures on the back so you can read along with me. Uh, so this says, only for Game Boy Advance, or uh, also Game Boy Micro, or, and also uh, Nintendo DS. So, what are we doing? We're going to join the Elite Math Patrol and battle through more than 70 levels. We're, we're not completing the game today. I don't think my camera has that much battery. I don't think my SD card has that much space. And frankly, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. All 70 levels of this? I mean, they probably get pretty hard. More than 70 levels of galactic action as you, or in this case, we drive back the evil kleptoid empire. It teaches, what are we gonna learn here? We're gonna learn addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fact families, logic patterns, place values, money. So this is a, a financial tool, time, vocabulary, fractions and word problems and it's all based on first and second grade standards adaptive gameplay automatically adjust to continually engage the player so the difficulty will be adaptive i take it dynamic content specifically targets the subjects at which each player needs practice this is uh, so some of the specifics on the esrb rating enter no edutainment edutainment and mild fantasy violence. Those are the uh, those are the warnings for parents. There is edutainment featured in this game, and there is also mild fantasy violence. We've got the official Nintendo seal there. A couple of screenshots teaches addition and subtraction. It says in that first one, and then in the other one, teaches money. Here you can see two plus blank equals five. I think. Uh, well, I won't tell you how to beat that level. We'll, we'll play through a little bit of this game together and, and we'll see. Uh, so let's cut into this thing. Now, when I was a kid, there actually was a math game that I would play, but it was not on Game Boy Advance. I was into Math Grand Prix on Atari 2600, which is a bit before my time, but 
the more modern consoles were often not accessible to me because my brother would play them instead. And so I'd go into a different room and I would play Math Grand Prix, which was a math racing game for the Atari 2600. That was a classic for sure. Uh, but my guess is that the math edutainment games probably got a little bit better with time. So by the time we get Math Patrol on Game Boy Advance, I'll bet this is a whole lot more exciting than Math Grand Prix on Atari 2600. Wow, I can only imagine how long it has been since I actually touched a Game Boy Advanced game box. Uh, all right, well, I got the shrink wrap off this thing. Let's actually open the box and see if we can do it without damaging it too much. But I don't see, okay, I guess this is our point of entry right at the top. Just trying to look for a point of entry. Like, I don't remember what it was like to open up a Game Boy Advance box. Is this how they all were? You open them from the top? Huh. That's news to me. I guess this is how it worked. So let's see here. Uh, by the way, yeah, this is like a real cartridge, you know, and um, the analog glow-in-the-dark pocket plays real Game Boy and Game Boy Advance cartridges. So we can pop this cartridge in the pocket and, uh, you know, we can learn stuff. We can learn money. We're going to be rich if we can only beat all 70 levels of this game. Our financial literacy will be off the charts. So there is our cartridge. It says Math Patrol, but the, the word math is so much bigger and the word patrol is so squished that it looks like it just says math. And there is so much junk on this cartridge. I'll take a closer look at a second. Slide it out of the plastic case there. Let me zoom in on this cartridge so you can see it nice and close. I mean, look at that. So many logos and things on here. My God, what a mess. Here we have our obligatory health and safety precautions booklet. You cannot play Math Patrol on Game Boy Advance uh, without reading the health and safety precautions booklet. Um, so in the interest of my safety and my health, I will read this booklet and then we can resume the video. All right, that was f awful. Let's move on to the manual of Math Patrol for Game Boy Advance. So this is the instruction booklet. It looks just like the box the uh, manual cover does. So, you know, there you go. It's a nice, high-quality print. Oh, man, what a great manual. I don't know if it's great. It looks great, but let's open it up and actually see. We've got warnings about battery leakages, and here are our table of contents. Uh, we got a section on story. The GXB Rewards Program. I, I assume they released this, this company, GXB, released several edutainment games, so there was some sort of rewards program. Map screen game types, power-ups, practice games, viewing practice game results for the educator, for the parent, difficulty types, ship shop, available upgrades. Okay, all sorts of cool stuff here. Um, here's a story. Do we want to read the story? This video is already going to be long enough. I think we'll skip that for now. There it is. If you want to read the story, have at it. Set the video quality nice and high and you can read the story. Uh, I don't want to read too much of this because you probably would rather just look at the game. Um, you know, we'll be able to figure all this stuff out, I think. Educational benefits. We have an educational benefits section. Each player is individually assessed. Yeah, yeah, the box already said this. Provides a solid, it's not great, but it's solid, personalized review of mathematics fundamentals. Integration with website progress tracking so parents and teachers can easily view and reward player progress. What? You could use this like, I wonder, do teachers use this in the classroom? I know a lot of kids have like iPads in school these days. Did kids back in the day have Game Boy Advances in schools? Like, I mean, my school certainly didn't, but I don't know. Free corresponding pre-tests and post-tests worksheets. You know, it'd be funny if they released like a collector's edition or a deluxe limited edition of this game like they do a lot of popular games these days. Uh, but with the Math Patrol, the Kleptoid Threat, the collector's edition for $100 would come with like a bunch of tests and answer keys and math worksheets. That would just be incredible. Maybe it'd even come with like a TI-108 calculator. All right, well, that's enough of the manual. I think we get the idea. Let's pop the cartridge into the pocket and give the game a look. All right, this is actually going to be the first cartridge that I play on this analog pocket. All the other games that I've played, I obtained through highly legal means, and that is all you need to know about that. So let's slide this cartridge in there, nice click, and turn this thing on, and boot up the Math Patrol cartridge. And we can begin our 
adventure fighting against the kleptoid threat by exercising our mathematic skills. So we'll go here into the play cartridge section and I get a little preview screen. Let's zoom in. This tells us the developer, GXB, and the publisher, Tomy, Region USA, but I don't see any logo. Well, let's play. So I'm already a little thrown off because we've got this health and safety warning, but I haven't seen the Game Boy logo. I thought the Game Boy logo came first. Huh, did this, did this game just not boot up with a Game Boy logo? That's really strange. All right, we got all the logos. Oh boy, well, let me turn this down a little bit. Make sure my brightness is up. So here we are. This is the main menu of Math Patrol, the kleptoid threat. Now, in order to make sure that you can see this on the camera, I'm looking at the screen at quite a slanty angle. So it's kind of hurting my eyes, but I'm gonna get through this as well as I can. I hope the volume I've put it at is acceptable. I hope you can hear it a little, but I don't want it to like drown my voice out. Well, let's check out the options in this game. I love the uh, the menu here. It's all like sci-fi and green, you know, looks pretty cool. Music, sound effects, brightness, um, everything seems fine here. Content progress, user code, currently no saved game. Okay, huh, well, we can leave that alone. I don't think we need to practice. I think we can just jump right into a new game here. If you have a GXB user ID, okay, so this would like connect to the GXB website. I have no idea if that is still active, um, but we can skip this because I do not have an account. All right, here's our story. That's why we didn't have to read it in the manual. The year 2762. We still have a long, long ways to go until then, uh, but here we are. All of Earth's nations live together in peace. Well, that's nice. It's going to be really slow, isn't it? Maybe you have to press A. Stand by, all right? Connecting to Math Patrol. <laughs> Enter name. Uh, okay. Um, Q-R-S-T. Uh, usually I just go by Todd. So um, Todd it is and done. Authorized. Begin transmission. The green looks really good with the, the, green, the green pocket here. All right, our game is saved. We don't have to worry about losing progress. Welcome to Math Patrol, Recruit Todd. You're going to start where everyone starts, out in the Oort Cloud sector, edge of the galaxy. Have fun. Man, this is... <laughs> I, I wonder, is the game going to give, like... So, so here's what I wonder. Is the game going to give context for why we're doing math? Like, in this advanced society that, that the game places us in, is math actually the way through which battle is done? Or is it just like a stand-in for combat? I don't know. Like, is it is, is it a metaphorical stand-in that the developers are letting us use to do like ship shooting stuff? Like in the in the game world, the ships shoot, but the way that we make it shoot is is to do math. I don't know if you whatever. Let's just keep going. This icon means that a mission is available. Okay, this is going to give me a headache if I read too much of this because because I'm looking at a slanty angle. Um, so. I'm gonna try to get through this without reading too much. Um, how do I get out of this? Oh, oh, okay. I'm rotating the, the ship right now. Um, so I'm supposed to go to the mission. Oh, and then press the A button. Comet cleaning. Okay, we got math, we got cleaning. I am ready to go. Details of your mission will appear here. Press the A button to continue, okay? Location, Orc Cloud. We can use your help and we already have a job for you. Clear away comets to make way for a new space highway. All right, I was kind of hoping we'd start with like a placement test or something. Oh crap, oh crap, man, it's hard for me to see. Fire enemies by pressing the A button. Okay, where's the math though? Man, we got a fire song in the background. Great, you'll see that you earned one credit for that asteroid. Okay, I earned one credit. Where are my credits? I guess they're right there, 0.01. Asteroids with answers on them are worth more. Oh, okay. So I have to shoot asteroids with answers on them. I didn't I didn't realize that. That's interesting. Uh-huh. Just shoot the right answer. Okay. Great. I earned three credits for the correct answer. That was just like a circle. I didn't know the circle was the correct answer. All right. Give me some math to do. Up here, you'll see how much health and fuel you have left. I gotcha. Uh-huh. Can we cut to the chase here? Health, fuel, and shields can all be refilled by collecting power-ups, all right? That makes sense to me. 
There's a triangle. Oh, what? That's wrong? How am I supposed to know what's right? Squares and triangles. Health power up. Okay, beautiful. There's a circle. That's wrong. Um, I guess I want the triangle then. That's right. Fuel power up. What consumes fuel? Can I, like, boost? I don't know. The circle is right. Now let's finish the mission. Okay. Do we get to do math after this? Triangle. Bam. Oh, I missed an asteroid. Graphics aren't, uh, aren't incredible, but they're not terrible. I wonder if I can shoot the wrong asteroid repeatedly to be continuously penalized. There's a triangle asteroid. That's wrong again. Circle asteroid. Man, this game is hard. Um, it, it, let me shoot the square asteroid. Yeah, because it seems like the first one is never correct. Am I looking for a square asteroid next? Nope. Circle asteroid. How am I supposed to know this? I thought there was going to be, like, math questions on it. Surely that, that, that must come after this level. I've discovered a spy bot. That thing there. What does that do? Does that let me, like, see the math? Very good. Let's see how well Math Patrol thinks you did. What does Math Patrol know? What does Math Patrol have to do with this? We didn't even do any math. We just shot squares. Completed. Okay. Game saving. Mission score? Correct. 30. Bonus? 2. Wrong! N minus 15! I'm on normal difficulty? How do I turn this difficulty up? Because uh, assuming that it's real math, you know. I mean, I'm pretty good at real math. Kind of want it to be hard. A new mission has appeared on screen. When you finish missions... Okay. So is this is like actually the map screen? <laughs> It's like two rectangles is the map. It's the map. <laughs> okay. Uh, aliens attack. Let's do this one. This is also in the orc cloud. Um, alien ships closing in. Defeat them. With my math, I hope. Let's see. Oh, oh crap. This is moving fast. Oh, man. This is moving real fast. Um, identify circle. Identify cir Identify triangle. Okay. Okay. Now it's actually giving me directions. I got to try to not get my head blown off, though. Identify circle. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is like, you know, where we're just learning the names of shapes and stuff. Is there any way that we can, like, skip the shapes, though, and actually do some arithmetic? Um, identify triangle. Uh-huh. That's the triangle. Oh, no! Why does it say hard there? Have I suddenly been, like, promoted to the hard difficulty, even though I got 15 points off? Regroup with Math Patrol and try again. Uh-huh. Wow, that's embarrassing. I just got absolutely spanked on level two of Math Patrol. Um, le let's try this again, I guess, but I really wish that I could just make this math. Oh, whoops, now I'm looking at the credits. Okay, let me try to power through some levels, and I'll get back to you when we start doing math. I'm stuck watching the credits now, so it's going to be a while. Okay, so I actually had to come back to you sooner than I expected because I just finished the, the second level there. I got it perfect, by the way. I didn't get a single wrong answer. Um, and, l and look at this. So it told me, you should go to the shop now to buy a shield because you have enough money. I now get why the credits are like just dollars and cents because they want you to practice your, your finance stuff. And so I go to the shop to buy the shield and the game wants me to tell it how much change I should get back because this shield costs 75 cents and I have 77 cents. So how much change should I get back? This is hilarious. The thought of like, a normal game just suddenly asking you to tell it how much change to give you back is hilarious. So I'm going to go with two cents. I'm correct. Great job. Thank you. Great work. The following item has been added to your inventory. Shields 1. Really good name. Great job. Now you can use shields to protect your ship. Won't be necessary. Uh, press B button three times to return to the solar map. What? Three times? Two three okay <laughs> saving game all right here we are we are back at the solar map uh which is also known as a rectangle oh and you can see that uh i got three stars see so there's my proof i got three stars on that second mission because i did it perfectly um okay well so i had to turn everything back on to record this god willing scouting for spies level three is going to be some real math um so whoops let's see what happens here Scouting for spies. 
location. We're still in the Oort cloud. If anyone went to uh, nature's classroom as a kid or uh, anything like that, um, there was always that Oort report. That was always fun. Uh, it seems that the Spybot and those alien ships belong to a group called the Kleptoids. Ah, scout the area for any more of these so-called Kle- Yes, here we go. We've got some math. Wh which is greater one? Oh, okay. So we're not even like, we're not even forced to go from left to right. We are in open world math patrol game now. Which is greater one or nine? <laughs> I don't know. They're both coming at me pretty- in Oh, Jeez, now I'm playing with the slant again. Uh, nine is greater. Nine is greater. Let me get to nine before they kill me. Oh, now they're so close. How am I supposed to do this now? I wish I could boost. Oh, jeez, Alu. Oh, no, no. I, I didn't mean it. I just missed. Holy moly. Man. You know, anytime I turn the camera on, I just start, I just start getting wrecked. The kleptoids have beaten you. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Um need to be more decisive this time and act swiftly eight or two eight's bigger let me go find him where's eight where's eight that's two i don't want him i want the greater fella eight i don't deal with small fries like two where is eight i don't think you can hear the music very much um or the sound effects oh oh there's my shield whoops but, uh, but they're pretty good. There's eight. All right, there we go. Which is greater, one or zero? That would be one. You know, one of my... There's, there's a lot of things that you experience teaching um, where you're like, wow, you know? I, I didn't... I couldn't even remember that this idea was so troubling um, or, or difficult to learn for the first time. And one of the things I've found students struggle with a lot, like forever, it seems. I mean, that's not true, but I just notice it more than I would think is people who think zero is like, like not a number, you know? Like, oh, two minus two, what is it? Well, it's nothing. It's like, ah, uh, well, no, I mean, not nothing, yes, but but what's the number? It's like, well, I don't know, it's nothing. Well, it's, <laughs> it's zero, you know? Uh, three or one, that would be, man, one just, just hit me right in the butt, I think. Three would be greater in this case. Why is it, I'd like to know, why is it that it's always the smaller number that, that is right up on me. And then I have to go flying around trying to find the bigger one. Is that just chance? Or is it bad design? I don't know. Nine or seven. See, there's seven r is right there. Like, couldn't it just be nine that appears right next to me? That would make this a lot easier. There's nine. Oh, I need that health bad. One or eight. Ooh, this is the first one, I think, that, that totally screwed me over this really hard question. One or eight. Let's go find eight. Where is eight? Hmm. I wish I had a map. It's probably something I can buy at the ship shop as long as I uh, tell it how much change to give back to me. It's really hard to aim, though, where, like, you can only face four directions, you know? Oh, I guess you could... No, you can face eight directions. Okay. It's still kind of hard, though. Um, not, oh, there's nine right there. Nice. Got my health. Which is greater, six or seven? That would be seven. So if I could go find seven, um, not him. Where is seven? All right, man, that level absolutely sucked. Just spend my whole time floating around, uh, unable to, uh, to, f to find the darn number that I'm looking for. That's really boring. <laughs> Um, okay, so we completed the mission. I got, uh, what did I get? Three wrong? I had such a trigger finger, because I'd, like, fly around for minutes trying to find the right ship, and then when one would finally appear, it's like, oh, I just want to shoot it. Hurling Comets, Battle for Dysnomia. Um, I, I'm gonna go to this level, which seemed, you know, kind of looks like the later level. I really just want to get to some arithmetic, is what I want. Moon dysnomia. The kleptoids are attacking the moon. Make sure you fool your ship. Blah blah. Okay. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's a clock game. Um, that's, <laughs> it's 10:30. Wow. This game is full of surprises. Um. Oh shit. <laughs> it's one o'clock. One o'clock. Um. There's my heart. Um. 11:30. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, this is much better than the... One o'clock again? They're already reusing problems? 
there's, there's several times on a clock, you know? That's eight o'clock. That's, that's when we start school. Um, I got to start calculus Monday morning, 8.05 actually we start. That's 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Fly into the correct fuel tank to refuel. Oh, now the fuel tanks are, are gonna represent answers? Well, where are they? Are they down here? Oh, oh, um, 11 o'clock, that one, All right there, bam. All right, uh, that's three o'clock. So what am I, what am I looking for here? Yeah, there we go, three o'clock. Easy, easy, nine o'clock, nine o'clock, bam, there we go. What do we got next? That's gonna be three o'clock again. Man, they're using like really easy times here. I am on baby mode. Uh, 8.30, 8.30, it's just turned it to ultra nightmare, I think. What's next? Uh, four o'clock, four o'clock. A week ago, I was up until four in the morning. It, I was so tired, holy moly. 1.30, 1.30, that's right there. That's like the twilight of a school day, 1.30. 8.30, no, 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 7.30. It's it's weird, because the hour hand is just like directly on the eight. But why would, it shouldn't be directly on the eight because the minute hand is on the seven. So I, I honestly don't know what it means. Like, what? I'm gonna go with 8.30, but that, that clock is kind of difficult to read. Um, I don't see 8.30 as an answer choice. Uh, 7.30, I, I guess it must be 7.30 then. Uh, whoops, 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 I have to shoot it, I have to shoot it, whoops. <laughs> I, pr I pressed the shield button instead, 7.30, okay, I guess. Looked like the hour hand was on eight, like exactly. Uh, this one would be 3.30, maybe it's just because I'm looking at the screen in a slanty angle, so it's kind of hard, you know? Uh, this is one o'clock, one o'clock. Are we almost done? I'm curious what the next level will be. This one's clock stuff. What's next? 4.30. Nice. I, I do wish this game moved along at a bit of a faster clip, although it wouldn't work well with the controls. Like the controls are very clearly made for the game at this speed. Um, like, I, I'm not moving very fast. I'm not very nimble with this ship. All right, level completed. Saving game. Congratulations. Now, don't mess around. We need you elsewhere. Mission score. Does that mean I get to go, like, to a different place outside of the orc cloud now? Difficulty? Normal. Oh, you know, so I wonder, can I change the difficulty? Or is the difficulty just going to, like, depend on what level I'm at? Like, everything here is normal. And then if I go further in the game, the difficulty will be listed as hard. I don't know. Battle for Eris. Let's try this. Because I still don't feel like I'm doing much math here. I'm reading clocks. I'm identifying shapes. More kleptoid chips are attacking Eris. It's time to join the fight. I guess this is... Oh, here we go. <laughs> we got fractions now. Now, this is some math. What? F what? Square over square? Oh, so it means like over like. So I want two over two. Okay. Interesting. What frat? What? Three squares over three squares? I guess I'd be six over six. Huh. This seems like a really weird way to ask these questions. I guess I can get down with it, though. That's... Okay. Wow, man. You know, it's... <laughs> the, the bullets of the enemies take up... Uh, the, the bullets of the kleptoids, they take up so much space. And I'm trying to talk, and I'm trying to not have my eyes fall out of my face looking at the screen at this slanty angle. Okay, what fraction? That's two over two. Uh-huh. That's uh, five, six, right? Because we got six squares. Five of them are filled in. What? Five. Oh, whoops. Yeah, five eighths. It's hard for me to count. Five eighths. I got to practice my counting. Uh, man, it's hard to look at these. One, two, three, uh, four, five. Is that six? And then three, and then four, and then eight, or eight twelfths, right? Yeah. I guess if I just look at the possible answers, that will probably help. So this is uh, the numerator's one less than the denominator. This is uh, one, so where's my one at? Two over two again. It seems weird how many repeat questions there seem to be. Am I looking for two fourths or one half or what, what, what does it want me to find here? Fly into the correct fuel tank to refuel. Um, definitely not three fourths, definitely not two eighths. 
seems like it's never the first two fuel tanks. It's always like the third one. I, I think it's been that every time, which seems pretty silly. Uh, am I supposed to fly into the one six fuel tank? Cause like that fraction could be one sixth or it could be five sixths. What? That's kind of dumb. I mean, I guess they've established the pattern, you know, that the red is the red is what you have. But the fact that you could say, oh, well, the red is five six, but the blank was one six. And then those are the two options they give you seem kind of silly, kind of like a silly game design. One third or two six. I think I'm looking for two six. There we go. This is going to be five sixths. Yeah, you know, sixths. I hate that word so much. I was thinking of making a video about that. You know, another really interesting video. How awful the word sixths is. It's such a demanding word. You've got to hit the sound of the X, which is a KS sound. Then you need the TH sound. Okay, so look at that. The first fuel tank was the answer. Hypothesis destroyed. Um, ah, crud. Uh, then you need the TH sound, right? So the X and then the th and then the S sound. Like that's ridiculous. Sixths. I hate that. Someone's got to fix that. Uh, two, isn't this two six? Oh, there it is, right in the bottom. This is a boss fight, I think. A little frame drop. Uh, one eighth. That's point one two five for my decimal fans out there. One two three four two eighths. Two eighths, right there. Bam. One half. Okay, this is actually the best level so far. It's kind of action packed. A lot going on. We're actually doing a little bit of math. Um, that was cool. I like that. Mission score, correct. What I get wrong? I, I got two wrong. That was, by the way, that those, um, uh, I don't remember why I got them wrong. I'm not going to make excuses. Really pitiful, honestly. First and second grade Game Boy Advance game. Uh, let's see. See the blinking bar on the right of the screen? Yeah, that means a new sector. Ooh, we can finally leave the Oort cloud. Fly to the top of the screen and press, I don't know what, probably A or something. Let me press A. Nope. B? Nope. R? No. L? No. Left button? No. Okay, how do I do it? I want to go to the next sector. Okay, there we go. I had to go to like the top right of the screen. Um, and then what's over? What's that? Scavenge the wreckage. Galactic quiz. Let's try that. What's the galactic quiz? Galactic quiz. It's like we're at a game show. Brought to you by Saturn Fuel. Give your rocket a boost. Can you beat the quiz before getting three answers wrong? Sure I can. I, I, I play the little professor. I know how to do this stuff. Fantastic prizes. Uh, colored comets, planets, comets. I don't know what, what any of this means. Splitting ships, moons, comets. You know, I wonder if this these are like questions about math or if they're questions about the game world. I have no idea. Taking sides. Let me try that one. That sounds kind of mathy. How many sides does a triangle have? Oh, here we go. We got to wait for the answers to come in. I'm going to go with three on that one. Woo! You can hear the crowd cheering. That's great. Great job. Okay, all mixed up. If you know that 237... Okay, so this just got um, this just got a lot harder. Actually, well, a lot more. Finally, some arithmetic is all I mean, you know? Um, so this is asking you to understand the commutative property of addition. If you know 237 plus 421 equals 658, then what is the sum of 421 and 237? Well, because the order of addition does not matter, my friends. This is also 658, and the crowd goes wild. Great job, thank you. Okay, man, there's a lot of these, huh? Four comets fly by. Three of them are green. What fraction of the comets are not green? That would be one-fourth. One-fourth of the comets are not green. Bam. All right, let's see how quickly we can get through all of these. What will I win if we just do them all? Planets. Today, you passed three planets. You need to pass six total. How many more do you need to pass? Oh, yeah, so this is like where you do your word problems, I guess, because the box said there were going to be word problems, and here they are. It does not disappoint. Say what? What's this one? If you know that 14 plus 88 equals... It's just the same question again, where they switch the order of the addition. It's too bad they don't actually ask you to do the addition. I guess that just is in a different part of the game. Water. What's this question? You had eight water packs. After giving some away, you have three left. How many did you give away? Well, if I have three left, I must have given away five. I'm pretty good at this, I gotta say. This is making me feel very confident in myself. 
What's this one? I have three bags of stardust out of eight total bags. What fraction of the bags do you have? I've got three eighths of the bags. That's what I've got. Nice. All right, so uh, that's fun. Let's check out what the next level is though. Wait, wait, if I stop now, I won't earn any credits? What, I have to do every single one if I want credits? What's the deal with that? Uh, whatever, I wanna see what the next level is, so I'm gonna quit. Now return to our regular programming. All right, let's go here to the scavenge thing. See what's going on here. Location, dwarf planet, Pluto. Uh-huh, blah 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 Identify even numbers. Aw, oh, man, I gotta fly around again for this one. Uh, seven is not an even number. 38 is an even number. Oh, but in this one, the even numbers are just chilling. Wait, what, what? Oh, identify odd number. The task changed. I didn't notice that. Um, so in this one, the numbers are just chilling, and then there's a ship chasing me around. I'm looking for an odd number. I see six, I see 90. I do not see an odd number though. Where could it be? Hmm. You see, this really stinks. I'm just floating around. I see even numbers. Ah, 95, there we go. Uh-huh, now identify an even number. Don't mind if I do. There's an odd number, I don't want that. Gotta fly around some more. I wonder if I can uh, destroy that ship that's chasing me. Yes, I can. 83, no. Why does it take so long? So long to find the even number. 17, no. 47, no. Man, this stinks. 36, there we go. Identify the odd number. Now it's gonna be a bunch of evens showing up, right? Yep, there's 12. There's 74. Always gotta put me through the paces here. There's 54. And finally, 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 There's 67. God, this sucks. Okay, I think I've played about as much of this game as I can stand for now. Some of the levels were actually fun. I like that clock level a lot. These levels where you have to fly around to try to find the thing, it probably wouldn't be as painful if I wasn't looking at this from a slanty angle just so that the camera can see it well. Um, it might not be as bad, but still pretty bad. Like you're just flying around empty space most of the time and the gameplay is not very interesting. The fact that they have a shop though, and the currency is all in terms of like dollars and cents, that's cool. And then you have a whole catalog of word problems where they knew they couldn't fit that into like this normal shooter gameplay. So how do they do it? Well, they put it in this sort of um, in game world context of a solar themed game show with the word problem so uh that, that was pretty cool too i like that music and sound effects all fine graphics fine i like some of the rotation animations on the ship uh, but besides that it's just pretty average some of the clock pictures you saw i thought were a little ambiguous but you know others may disagree and that's a not so quick look at math patrol the kleptoid threat let me know if you had experience with math games as a kid like I said, for me, I only ever really played Math Grand Prix on Atari 2600. I don't remember playing any other math games, aside from some of the Brain Age type games for Nintendo DS, and I guess that was probably it. Uh -huh.